Here we are back to college. Fall is in the air and I already have so much homework. Oh, I have a math problem for you to solve. What is it? What do you get when you divide the circumference of a pumpkin and its diameter? I have no idea. Pumpkin pie. Well, I can already tell this is going to be a great show. MSU Tonight starts now. Welcome to MSU Tonight. I'm Lauren Campbell. And I'm Derek Unreiner. Coming up on the show, we'll welcome Dr. Stephanie Anderson to speak about disaster preparedness. Later on in the show, we'll have some fun involving challenges and maybe even some foreign snacks. Right now, it's time for Hot Topics. Murray, Kentucky has been home to the Downtown Farmers Market for nearly 20 years. It opened in May 1998 and has provided local residents with the opportunity to shop for fresh produce and crafts straight from the small town community. MSU's Tonight's Kendrick Tharp has the story. The sounds of light traffic and quiet calm fill the air as local residents and visitors from nearby Murray, Kentucky make their way among the stands of fresh produce. The weekly downtown farmers market consists of local farmers and sometimes vendors from other regions coming together to sell and render fresh farm goods to consumers. Charles Palmer, a local farmer from Kirksey, Kentucky, says that the purpose of the farmers market is to create opportunities for farmers to get quality, consumable foods straight to the tables of local patrons. For the local consumers so that they can have access to good quality food. It isn't just Callaway County residents at the market. Visitors from Graves County attend the farmer's market and sell those goods as well. Throughout the event, visitors will discover that fruits and vegetables aren't the only goods to be found here. Local crafts and baked goods are available as well as kettle corn. Uh, the popcorn is, is called mushroom popcorn. It holds the sugar really well and so uh, it consists of cooking it in the kettle with the sugar and the oil and then putting the salt on there to get the sweet salty taste. For MSU Tonight, I'm Ken Thun. This Wednesday marks the first of many opportunities to cuddle with an adorable animal and relieve your stress at pet therapy. Students can pet and play with the dogs and cats in Alexander Hall Atrium from 12 to 1 on September 13th. This event is put on by the College of Education and Human Services. Andy Harden is one of the featured artists in the Clara M. Eagle Art Gallery presented by Murray State University Art Galleries and the Department of Art and Design. His exhibit is called Cloud Witness and is based off his chemistry background. It's all about the relation of the cosmos and particles and um, basically how the world is made up of different materials. Harding's exhibit is open until September 23rd. Upcoming exhibits include Vast by Ron Johnson, Folk Fiction, and BMF exhibitions. This coming Thursday, September 14th, Murray State will have a study abroad fair on the second floor of the Kerr Center. The fair will be from 11 a.m. until 2 p.m. Students can learn about upcoming education abroad programs provided by the university and other outside programs that Murray State partners with. Students can also meet professors who are taking groups abroad, speak with students who have recently returned, and enjoy some international snacks. The racers stand at 1-1 one one this season as they took their first loss this past weekend against Central Arkansas, 41-13. The next game will be Saturday on the road against Missouri State. The racers will return home for their game on September 23rd against Austin P, which also happens to be family weekend. Invite your loved ones to come out and enjoy that game as well. Go Racers! The creamy taste of a sweet scoop of ice cream on a warm September day. That's the treat Murray patrons enjoyed this weekend. 
The 18th annual Murray Ice Cream Festival took place on the Court Square in downtown Murray off Main Street. People of all ages came out to enjoy the community tradition. Each patron stood in line for a bowl of their favorite premium Kroger ice cream flavor. Murray State Murray Main Street plans the festival each year and the event was sponsored by the Murray Bank. Don't go far, we're coming right back with more MSU Tonight. Guest speaker, challenges, and some hopefully tasty foods you will not want to miss. Stay tuned. Welcome back to MSU Tonight. I'm here with Stephanie L. Anderson and we are going to be talking about her efforts in volunteering with the Red Cross. Dr. Anderson, tell me a little bit about the Red Cross's mission. The American Red Cross is a nonprofit organization that is not a government organization, as some may think, and we are there to provide relief during disasters, as well as prepare um, the American population for emergencies, and then obviously responding to them. So tell me a little bit about your role in helping with the Red Cross. I am on the board of directors for the purchase area chapter of the American Red Cross. And we all know how Hurricane Irma and Hurricane Harvey have hit different areas of our nation. What is the Red Cross doing to try to help those victims? The, the, the Red Cross has sent um, thousands of volunteers already. Um, we've sent about 3,400 down to uh, Texas in response to Hurricane Harvey. We um, have served over a half a million meals and snacks to those that were displaced out of um, their homes and during Harvey. Um, and then we just yesterday gave out $15 million worth um, of funds to those in the Texas area. So we're going shelter to shelter, um, giving $400 to each family. And then um, prior to Hurricane Irma, we actually deployed um, thousands of volunteers down to Texas as well. It sounds like y'all are doing so much to help those victims, but what can we do right here in Murray, Kentucky to help victims of Irma and Harvey? Well, one of the big things we need right now is blood donations. Um, when the hurricanes happen, they needed extra blood. So the supplies from, say, our area and other places across the country ended up going down there. Um, so here locally, we definitely need blood donations. And they're still sending some down to Texas and in Florida as well. So there is a blood drive on Thursday at St. John's Episcopal Church here in Murray. It is on West Main Street from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. Those that want to donate blood can go to redcross.org and sign up for a time slot or they can call 1-800-RED-CROSS. Taking a different direction, we both know that disaster can strike at any time, anywhere. How can we be prepared for when something like that happens? There are a couple things you can do, Ashley. The first is to create an emergency preparedness kit. Um, some of the things that you would wanna include in that would be flashlights, batteries, medications, non-perishable food, water, anything that your family is gonna need. Um, we typically say that if you're being evacuated, you want at least three days worth of these items. Um, and then if you are going to shelter in place at your home, then two weeks worth um, of, of items. So um, getting your family's disaster preparedness kit together, make sure it's all ready to go in case a disaster strikes. The second thing is to have a plan and to trial run that plan at least once a year with your family. And that way a disaster strikes and everyone knows where to go. So if you set up a couple different locations, um, in case your family gets separated, maybe one somewhere in your neighborhood, one somewhere else in the city. That way, if you're, you're separated from a tornado, during a tornado, something like that, you can all meet back up at that same place. The other thing that you could do is to create an emergency contact. And that would be someone that is not in your area because that way you can contact them if you're not able to reach your family. Um, to let them know that you are safe. And make sure everybody in your family has that number. How do we talk with our families about being prepared for emergencies? 
Well, the big thing is is to educate them, um, especially with, with little kids. Um, you teach them very early on to dial 911 in the event of an emergency. And we want to do the same thing when it comes to disaster preparedness. So talking about them, um, with them about the plan, ensuring that they know where to go, they understand the things that could happen in a disaster. Uh, don't want to scare them, but you want to prepare them. If a disaster was to strike right here in Murray, what facilities or other things that are going to help us out, what, what are available to us if a disaster was to strike? Well, if a disaster struck in, um, in Western Kentucky in the Murray area, we obviously would mobilize our volunteers. Our volunteers are absolutely amazing at the American Red Cross. And we have so many in this area that have just dropped everything to go down and help with Harvey and Irma. Um, right now, we even have some that will be down there for up to three months. Um, so if we were to have something hit in this area, which we're no stranger to, we know the ice storms, um, tornadoes, even Hurricane Ike when we had the winds from that, um, we would mobilize um, our, our volunteers. We'd set up shelters, um, churches, um, probably here at Murray State, CFSB Center would be a great place. Um, but we don't set those up ahead of time. That's something that, um, that we would announce when, when the time came. As we wrap things up, when and where is that blood drive one more time? It is on Thursday, September 14th, that's this Thursday, at St. John's Episcopal Church here in Murray on West Main Street from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. And people can register ahead of time for a time slot. It takes about 30 minutes or so um, if you register ahead of time to donate blood. And you can do that by calling 1-800-RED-CROSS or going to redcross.org. Thank you for joining us, Dr. Anderson. Thank you all for joining me. Up next, we have a challenge on the way. Stay tuned. Hello and welcome back to MSU Tonight. We have our hosts, Lauren Campbell and Derek Unterreiner with us. Today, we're going to do a challenge. And what's basically going on, he probably can't hear us right now because he's got music that's playing in his ears. Lauren is going to ask him questions and he's going to try to answer those questions the best he can. So if he gets them wrong, then he obviously gets, a, he doesn't get a point. And if this will switch and then if uh, she gets it right, if she gets a point, if he gets it right, they get a point. At the end, whoever has the most points gets to take over that person's Twitter account and tweet whatever they want and they have to keep it for 24 hours. So. Go ahead and ask your questions. What's your favorite breed of dog? I saw something with my favorite something. I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Wow, those are really loud. I don't want him to like die. <laughs> <laughs> What's your favorite class you're currently in? Again, saw something with favorite. I have no idea. I think it looked like my favorite class. I don't know. Uh, so I'm going to go with my capstone class with Professor Wright because she's just awesome. So, yeah. Are you more of a coffee or a tea person? Huh. What? <laughs> <laughs> I have no idea what you just said at all. Nothing. What is your favorite NFL football team? I saw something about favorite animals, so I'm going to go with dog. I'm thinking that's correct. <laughs> What's your last name? My last name is Unterreiner. <laughs> that's good. What is your favorite show to binge watch on Netflix? Nope. Did not understand a single thing you said. Just heard, just saw favorite something. <laughs> oh, that was good. That was good. Okay. Oh, so how bad was so, that? So... <laughs> um, you did good. You, oh, did, you got... Two, two right. You got two right. I got two. Good oh, job. Wow, that's shocking. Right. Unfortunately, get you get to listen to Screamo. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So let me pull up your questions, and I'll start now. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, All I right. was going to let her change the song. But. Right. All right. So first question for you, Lauren, is where were you born? I was born in Hopkinsville. <laughs> what is your favorite movie? My favorite movie is The Lion King. <laughs> What car do you drive? 
I don't know what that one. <laughs> <laughs> um, when will you graduate? I will graduate May of 2019. How many siblings do you have? How many siblings do I have? I think is what you said. I have one older brother. What is your favorite food? My favorite food is pizza. <laughs> and there you go. She got so five of So I'm those just going right. to say right now that um, <laughs> Lauren won. Yep. Um, so you get your Twitter taken over. Oh, goodness. So be sure. What's your Twitter just... handle? Um, well, my Twitter handle is U11BCBB. Go follow U11 UCBB. No, BCBB. BCB. Wow. <laughs> Good luck finding it. But if you find it, please follow it because there is no oh, telling goodness. what Lauren has planned. I'm not looking forward so to this. So don't all. go away because up next we're going to have some tasty foods from Korea. Come back after the break. I'm glad you didn't go far. Welcome back to MSU Tonight. I'm your host, Madison Morgan, and my guest here, I think you've already met her, Lauren Campbell, and we are here to try some tasty Korean snacks. Are Yay. you excited? I'm so excited. Because I know I am. So there is this, um, there's this company called Snack Crate, and every month they send you different snacks from around the world, and this month it happened to be Korea. So we got, we got a few Korean stickers, and we have a pamphlet that says like what you're eating and how like I, I guess what is in it and stuff like that so we're gonna start I'm gonna let you pick you see you figure mm. out which one you want to try first okay well we'll keep that right there so let's we know what see there's two of these yeah you want to try those first yeah okay I honestly <laughs> could not tell you how to pronounce this <laughs> um <laughs> I'm cook de ase. I don't really know. It came from Korea, so that's kind of weird. Yeah, what is it? Um, I don't know. It actually doesn't tell us what yeah, it is. Yeah, it's a. Uh, it is shortbread cookies yeah, with a coffee go. and cream flavored center. Oh, well, I needed coffee today, so. Oh no, this is really <laughs> messy. Do we eat? Yeah, you just eat, eat it. Mm. Oh my gosh, that's really good. That's really good. I feel like I've had this before. This is what it looks like. I mean, with a bite in it, but that's really good. It's really good. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's like a shortbread cookie, as is what it said. Well, that's really good. Okay, next. Nine out of ten. Yeah, nine out of ten would recommend. Um, I'm. I have personally been looking forward to this custard cupcake. Um, golden sponge cake filled with flavored wait flavor packed custard cream don't know how to read but so i don't really know how we're going to do this if i can open it this is like messy very i really should have brought a napkin oh okay well there's there there's that <laughs> so messy mm. yep yep it's pretty good. I'm really glad that I got this because this is really good. Mm -hmm. This is a, this is like a hostess thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's exactly what it tastes like. Yeah. It's pretty good. Let's get to, I want to get to the bottom of this because I really, I'm really excited about this one. This is Pushu Pushu, I think. Spicy rice. Spicy flavor. rice. The, the thing about this is that it's not uh, ramen noodles. It's you you don't like cook it here. I'll let you open that. Fun fact: I do eat my ramen noodles uncooked, actually raw, raw. So I think I'll like this one. I'm excited about it. Wow, it is. It's exactly like ramen noodles. It, this is exactly like ramen noodles. Oh my gosh! So I think they want you to eat it how I usually eat it. Oh. And this is how you do it. You put the spice. I'll on, let you eat that. On the, yeah, <laughs> I'm gonna let you eat that. On the noodles. And then um, just eat it. Just put it in. <laughs> it's like a cracker. I do it? Some base. Yeah. <laughs> How is it? <laughs> Good? Mm. All right. Well, unfortunately, we don't get to try all of the snacks, but thank you for joining us. There's more MSU tonight after the break. 
As much fun as we've had here tonight, we'll unfortunately have to say goodbye for now. Don't forget to watch us right here every Tuesday night at 5 on MSU TV 11 or visit and sub subscribe to us on our YouTube channel. Good night, everyone. Thanks for joining us.